So there was one condition that was met. If he did this, the servant said to himself, okay, that's one thing I prayed about, that she did that. She didn't have to. The servant found out that the girl was named Rebecca. And she belonged to the same clan as Abraham. This was just what the servant had prayed for. He knew then that God meant for Rebecca to be Isaac's wife. When he told this to Rebecca's family, they asked Rebecca, Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. Which is very important in marriage, that there be agreement, and that there be unity, and there be blessing uh, in, in the arrangement and what's going on. Rebecca left her mother and brother and went with the servant back to Hebron. There she married Isaac, who grew to love her very much. Okay, so this is a longer story in the King James Bible and other Bibles. And this here is shortened for children and for younger people. Uh, so it's shortened. But I, I think that we got a lot out of what we read today. Can you read us another one? We're going to stop right there. Uh, maybe later today we can do another one. Um, so we're going to stop right there. Um, yeah. Esau and Jacob is the next one. But this, I, I, the reason I want to is I want you, if you have any questions, I want you to ask me. Let's kind of focus on this story and I'll go jump to another story right away. I know you like me to read, but let's kind of get out of it what God wanted to get out of it. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, but, you know, some of the things that I said are very important for us to remember. And even though they deal with, uh, you know, Isaac and a bride for Isaac, some of the, the truths and the lessons can be applied at any time in our lives. Whether we're getting married or whether what, whatever we're doing, okay? We're working. We get tired. We get Everything happens for a purpose, even in our daily life. And as I said, Jesus got tired. He was walking and traveling, and he sat down. Look, Dad, this has print. That one doesn't. Well, and rest for a while. Get tired. We sometimes complain about our fatigue, right? We, we get tired. And, oh, I'm tired. Uh, I gotta stop. It's for you to stop. Right there. So, any grace God gave me. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for your word and for the story of Isaac and Rebecca and the servant who went out. Um, at Abraham's command to follow uh, what his master wanted him to do and to obey the Lord. And we thank you that this whole, this whole choice was a result of prayer. Not Abraham's prayer. Of course it was, of course, but the servant was involved in praying. And he prayed, and so we can see another answer to prayer. So the best things in life the best things that happen in our life are oftentimes the result of answered prayer. If you're not praying, and you're not taking time to pray, then some of those best things will never happen. Because the best things in life oftentimes are the result of prayer. So my encouragement to you is to pray. Pray more. Pray often. Pray sincerely and honestly and sincerely with God. And watch God do what would never happen had you never prayed. Pray. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you for my honey. Thank you for mommy and all the work she does. I know she's got a lot of things on her mind as well and many things that, that she likes, she wants to see happen. And we're excited together. We're excited and enthusiastic about this year. And I know that we got disrupted, and I know many things have happened. But we are trusting you that the best is yet to come, and I believe that. I trust you for that. I thank you for giving me good health and strength. I thank you for giving me vitality. I thank you, Lord, for giving me a clear head and a clear mind. I thank you for my spirit, my soul, and my body. I know that you're in charge of everything, and nothing happens by chance or accident. And I know that all things work together for good to those who love you. So I trust you, Lord. You're my friend. You're my father. You're my dad. 
You're my best friend. You're my advocate. You're my defender. You're my shepherd. You're the bishop of my soul, and you're the lover of my soul. You're the one who died for me, who loves me, who would give up everything for me. In fact, you did give up everything for me. You died on a cross. You left heaven. You took upon yourself a form of a man, and you died on a cross. You tasted death for me, a death that I would never be able to survive, and you died for me. You died, meaning you died the death that I was supposed to die so that I could live forever. You tasted death for every for every person so that we could live forever. So thank you, Lord, for you are the best, my best friend, my Father and my God, the Lord and Savior of my soul. You are the best. Thank you for everything, Lord. Bless my honey, Lord, today with supernatural strength. Give her grace and wisdom, Lord, in all that she says and does. Uh, cover her in your blood. Let the holy angels encamp around this house. Strike with all force and with all uh, with all might and power, Lord, any enemy, uh, any enemy of our home, of our family, and of our souls, Lord, strike with power and authority so that they can never arrive, so that our home is at peace, so that enemy, that the enemy cannot penetrate in any way, shape, or form. Your word says that you shall condemn every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment and um, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We stand upon those promises, not just because we're claiming it, but because we believe that we're in a place where we can claim that promise. We are walking with you. We are trusting you. We are, we love you. We honor you. We fear you. We love your word. Um, we're in love with the Lord Jesus Christ as followers of Jesus Christ. We believe we're in the place that we can say and claim that promise. So we stand on that promise today that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment, you shall condemn it and you will destroy it. Thank you, Lord, for that today. We thank you for the protection over our home and family and over our children. The holy angels of God encamp around this house continually in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We thank Amen. you for this day of celebration, this day of rest and peace, this day of um, great joy. Thank you, Lord, for giving us that joy in our heart through Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I like that, son. Oh, let me have some. I need some water. Oh, my boy. I need some water. Yeah, I know. You got your Paw Patrol? Oh, yeah. I timed this off. Oh. Help in this. Thank you, Lord. Daddy Josh, yes. he doesn't want me to help him. Leave him alone, then. Yeah. Leave him alone. If you're going to get in a... Gabe? Gabe? Oh, he's not... Why do you think? So... <clears throat> honey... I wrote down some things for either book titles or for labels for a business. But in reality, this would be a book that talks about that time matters. Basically, this book was to be intended to be a reflection on how we spend time. And that every breath we take takes up a little bit of time. But every breath matters. We sometimes think that, you know, this part of the day doesn't matter. I don't have much to do. Um... I'm just going to lay around and sit around. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that either. But we must remember that time is important. That um, everything that we do, even resting, is important. Even God said six days work and rest one day. So is the seventh day of rest less important than the six days you work? Not at all. It's just as important to rest. Or do any of the leisurely activities that God might want us to do. We go to the park with the kids. We go to the lake. We go whatever. We do whatever. Okay? That's important. It's important for us to have family time. Just as important for me to work and make a living and provide for my family. For you to do your garden and do the things you do. Everything that we do is important. The other book title is Every Ship uh, at the City Bible Church. 
and I think this was the day of or the day after, so on June 12th, I've written down 2021, the mysteries of God, to talk about those verses in the Bible that speak about a mystery. And, and at that day, I shared in the Bible study that when Paul said we are stewards of the manifold mysteries of God, uh, he did. He used that word also in Second Timothy, uh, or First Timothy, one of the two books, telling Timothy about the mystery of God that God had came down, that He died, raised from the dead, and I said that's a mystery to the world, and we're a steward of that mystery. As we hear about that mystery, it is not so much a mystery to us. How He did it might still be. How did? He... And as being a steward of that mystery, which is basically the good news, Amen. John 3.16, we have a responsibility, as Paul said, to be a steward of that mystery and to share it, to make it clear. Uh, as uh, Billy Graham used to very clearly make this mystery known to people that came to his crusade, he would amplify this mystery so that it was clear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you'd always tell them, you're not here by accident. That mystery became something understandable Amen. to the to the unbeliever. Billy Graham was being a great steward of that mystery and sharing it. And as I shared in the Bible today, we also have a responsibility to share this mystery of God that we are now fully aware of. The next uh, one was more like for... Uh, okay guys, labas naman tayo dito sa outdoor. Katatapos lang namin mag Bible study. For this Saturday is July 24, 2021. It's nice and a wonderful day. It's still hot here in our place guys. It's about 100 degree. And uh, I'm so happy guys that you come by here again in our channel. Look at that guys. Our... Our plants are still growing here. Nakakatuwa guys. So, malapit na ang tag-harvest guys. Maraming mga prutas dito. At iba't ibang mga gulay natin. So, tingnan naman natin guys ang ating peaches. Kasi nakakatuwa lang talaga itong aking mga tanom guys. Let's... Wow! Look at this guys, look at them. Look at them, beautiful. Mm, ganito yan guys, pag may itinanim, may aanihin. Mm, so sarap nila nito, ang dami. Maliit lang siya guys, very sexy yung aking plants. But I think next year it will have many many fruit. Kasi nag-propagate na yung ano, pwede na rin ako makapag makapag market or grafting dito kasi healthy naman siya at for the meantime guys tingnan natin ang iyang mga fruits ang dami dami guys dito oh ganyan yung mga peaches nyan so tingnan natin ang mga gulay natin wow ready for harvest na guys ang dami this is a squash Mm, ang laki guys, oh ang dami ang dami tayong pwedeng ma-harvest guys wow, look at that mm, so delicious 